Sir, y'all looked at me like, duh. Hey, have you looked in his closet lately? Have you looked in God's Aquafiki lately? Hallelujah. Amen. Yamato. Ine Yamato metakala ta'agafa. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. And who do you suppose he has it in there for? Hallelujah. It's not for the heathens. It's not for his enemies. It's not for the angels. It's not. Who do you suppose all that good stuff is for? <laughs> Hallelujah. Somewhere I remember reading or hearing that the scripture says that he will withhold no good thing. He will withhold no good thing. I don't know exactly if it says to those that fear his name or to those that love him or to those that serve him. It's one of those. Hallelujah. But I think a lot of us here qualify. I believe a lot of people in this room qualify. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. God help us to get in the warehouse today and say I'll take a dozen of those I'll take a half a dozen of that amen some of you ladies here y'all might need a euro to get you a karotsaki hallelujah but just get your karotsaki and push it down the aisle in God's storehouse today and say God Hallelujah, I need some healing in my house. I'll take a, I'll take a, a barrel of healing balm. Hallelujah. Lord, I need some economy in my house. I'll take a, amen, give me about four or five of those jobs, amen. So I'll pass them around to my friends uh, that will all have a good job. Lord, I, I, I tell you what, I... I need a big, big barrel full of that encouragement. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to bring that thing. Just Come on now. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you go to these places, you got these big barrels, you pull that handle, and they got this big mug, this big glass on it, and it goes, whoop, 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 and they turn it off. You know what I'm talking about? And they, they go, and they drink that and they get hallelujah. Well, I'm not talking about the brew. I'm not talking about I'm still, hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking about that big virili. Hallelujah. God, give me a big virili. Magali virili. Hallelujah. Of encouragement to Ayu Panematos. To God from the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I praise God. You just pull on that lever right now, everybody. <laughs> ah, whoopee! I feel good. I feel good. Are these all drunk? Is everybody in here drunk yet? Hallelujah. It's not drunk on I'm still or anything. They're drunk on the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. The God's warehouse is full of whatever we need. By the word of God, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. And so that which doth not, for that which is, is this, from that which doth not yet appear, that how it says it, amen. And what it's saying is this, that God made the whole world out of nothing. He scooped his hand across all eternity 
and he filled it up with a whole bunch of nothing and he spoke to that nothing and bam the worlds were framed <laughs> praise God you know folks that's exciting because there is nothing that's outside of God's ability if God, you, if you go in this warehouse and you walk in the warehouse of God and you don't find what you're looking for, go up to the front desk and say, Gabriel, you don't have what I need. And Gabriel will say, one moment, in a laptop. And he will go to the Lord and say, Lord, we don't have what they need. And he said, the Lord says, no problem. Canina problema. Hallelujah. Problema chica. Hallelujah. And he will reach out and get a big old handful of that nothing. And he will say to that nothing exactly what it is you need. Ha! Shut up, ba ba ha ha. And you've got it. Hallelujah. And you've got it. Amen. And I, I, I'm preaching before I preach. I want to give out some investment here today. Because you cannot invest in God and lose. If you invest in God, you will be rewarded. I have here for Miss Jovi Kopian a certificate of investment in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Sister Jovi, I'll give you this certificate. Amen. You can cash that in when you get to heaven or maybe you want to tell God to cash it in before. Amen. Here is uh, Mother and Sister Mary Manaquin, but they're not here. Amen. I've got Brother Alfred Surprise. Amen. His Investment in the kingdom of God of so many shares. Hallelujah. And we got Brother Ernesto Carrion. Hallelujah. Ernesto, Ernesto, Norma. They're not here either. Amen. Amen. And then we got also here Sister Olive Fabro. Sister Olive. Okay, yes. They have purchased 100 shares in God's stock. Hallelujah. Stock market. Praise God of God. It's going to pay. Amen. It's going to be a big reward. We have here, oh, we don't miss Delia Aguilar. Hallelujah. Miss Pedet. Ah, she's with the children in the Sunday school somewhere doing something. Amen. Praise God. But... To all of you that have invested in the kingdom of God here relative to what God, the miracle of crossroads has taken place, you will get an investment certificate. Praise God. Just to remind you that God pays his bills. God will pay his investors. It's a good investment. Do I hear an amen? Give me a witness, somebody. Give me a witness, somebody. Has God ever failed you? No. God has never failed me, and I don't know of anyone that he has ever failed. God, we've had, I'm getting too whole, unless y'all really want me to, but I don't think you want, y'all just nice to me sometimes, praise the Lord. I want to preach to you today, and I want, we want to do this together, okay? Comprehende, patalavate, mes. yes, amen, we're going to do this together, praise God, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> You're going to say amen. You're going to say preach. 
say, well, I like that, Pastor. Just whatever. Hallelujah. Praise God. But don't go to sleep. Because I've got a solution for that. <clears throat> I will baptize you the Catholic way. Hallelujah. If I see you going to sleep, you will get baptized the Catholic way. Okay, I'm talking to you right there now. Why do you get on the front bench and go to sleep? You wouldn't want to do that. No. Amen. I want to read some scriptures from uh, Joel, the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 25 through 28. And then I'm also going to read from 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 40. And from these two scriptures, I will uh, draw my message for the day. Joel chapter 2 verse 25, it says, and I will restore. Everybody say, restore. Restore. God is a God of restoration. Amen. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously. Say wondrously. Is God a wonderful God? Why is he wonderful? Because he does wonderful things. Hallelujah. Has he done wonderful things for you? If you haven't had wonderful things yet, get ready. They're coming your way. If you're a child of God, you just have to get some wonderful things every now and then because your God is a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Everybody happy at Crossroads. We only accept happy in Crossroads. Nothing else. Only happy is good at crossroads. Everybody happy? Happy? Hallelujah. I'm happy in the high time. I'm happy in the low time. I'm happy in the middle time. Hallelujah. I'm just happy. Praise God. That's the only way to be with the Lord and just stay happy. Amen. Uh, and, and ye shall eat plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Now this verse here, it, it puts it into the church. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Hallelujah. Amen. We are living in the days that have come to pass. We are living in the days of the outpouring of the spirit of God. We are living in the days when young men have visions and Oh, men, dream dreams, praise God, of the good things that God is doing and God is going to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon. Where is Brother Kishon, by the way? <laughs> Kishor, hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and he slew them there. Hallelujah. The prophet told them to go kill the false prophets. He slew them right there. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me just preach a little bit here. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, God hates sin. God hates sin. God hates idolatry. God hates all these things. Hallelujah. And God wants us to destroy these things out of our midst. To get these things out from among his people. 
Hallelujah. He don't want no more groves on the high places. He don't want any more icons in the, in the homes. In the, he don't want no more idols in our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. He don't want no more worldliness in our hearts, in our, in our thoughts, in our mind. He wants to destroy those things out of us with the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's here today. Every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice uh, has the access to the anointing of God uh, to squash these forces out of your life. Uh, amen. To destroy these powers uh, that would try to control you. Uh, amen. But the anointing of the Holy Ghost is here. Uh, and if you so desire, you can speak up to God and say, Set me free. Uh, and you will be made free indeed. Hallelujah. But this is not my message. Then he goes on and said, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Amen. And Ahab, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth the little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain hinder thee not. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we pray. You're anointing on the word of God today. Lord, let the message go forth. Oh, Lord, as Holy Ghost arrows. God, let them pierce, O oh Lord, in the very inner sanctums uh, of the souls, O oh God, of your people. Uh, and let them, O oh God, receive uh, a new faith and an encouragement, God. Uh, and let their eyes be lifted up on the fields which are wide and ready to harvest, God. Uh, and let your church go into the army mode, hallelujah, like a great army marching into battle, Lord God. Let us be focused together in one mind and one accord, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let your word so do it. Oh God, for your word is powerful. Your word is powerful. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let your word go forward. Praise God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can stand up or sit down. I don't care how you take your medicine. Hallelujah. Amen. But take the medicine. Hear the word and be blessed. Glory to God. The title of my message today would be Signs of an Imminent Victory. Signs of an Immediate Victory. A soon coming victory. Sign of the time right there. We just said set your people free and look who got free. Hallelujah. Sister Banu got free from her job and made it to the church house just in time to say amen brother hallelujah <laughs> I feel reckless to look out Zapion hallelujah the crossroads is going to be turned loose on Athens after a while and they're not going to know what hit them amen <laughs> thank you Jesus a cloud a wind blowing sounds of weeping sowers and travailing saints. Praise God. These are sounds and signs. Just like I read in our text, the Elijah, he saw a cloud the size of a man's hand. To some people it didn't look like much, but to the man of faith and the man of vision, amen, it meant all he needed to see. Hallelujah. Because God had spoke to his heart. God had already spoken to him. Amen. That he was going to send the rain. It was in his spirit that the rain was going to be coming. 
And so when he saw the little cloud, that's all he needed, to, amen, to jump up and run to Ahab and says, you better hurry up and get back to town because the highways are, are going to be flooded and you won't be able to get through if you hang around too long. Hallelujah. He said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. He saw a little sign. Praise God. Amen. 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 Just the little things sometimes. Little things that don't take a whole lot to the person of faith. It doesn't take a whole lot to the person that walks in the Holy Ghost, that walks in the Spirit. Amen. To see signs of God's imminent blessing. To see signs of what God is about to do. Can you hear say praise the Lord? Can I get a witness? Amen. Praise the Lord. There are signs, amen, that I have noticed through my life and my ministry. And God has a way of cluing in his people and letting them know what's going on. Sometimes he will send a message of tongues uh, to be interpreted uh, and God will speak to his people like that uh, and sometimes God will just open up the mouth of the prophet uh, and he will begin to say uh, what God wants you to hear uh, and he will declare unto his people uh, unto his beloved church uh, the thing that he plans to do in the near future praise God sometimes uh, amen uh, he just sends a little sign Amen. To let you know uh, that he's doing something. Uh, that he's working under the radar, we say. That he's working uh, with unseen hands. Uh, he is doing things uh, that the natural eye cannot catch it. How humble Oh, God. Are you with me here today? Can you sense it? Can you feel what I'm talking about today? Does anybody in the house have the Holy Ghost? Has anybody here been praying in the Spirit? Uh, amen. The chances are you know exactly what I'm talking about here today. Hallelujah. Now, I mentioned this last weekend, I think, before Brother Green preached. But I want to run it by you again today. Now, well, we've been praying for a pretty good while. We've been pastor here now. Well, I don't know how if we've been. We were assigned to be the pastor, but I, I don't know until we just became the pastor a little few a little while ago. Hallelujah! But Amen. In our prayers, while we pray, Hallelujah, Amen. We begin to sense the nature of God. We begin to pick up on the holiness of God. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, we begin to feel the breath of God. We begin to feel the beating of His heart. And we can kind of understand His intentions and what His will is for your person, your individual self, but also for the church in whole. Praise God. One scripture says, Paul said it said in the scripture in Acts, it said, it said, it seemeth good unto us and the church to send Barnabas and Saul. Hallelujah. It wasn't just the prophet, but it was the body. It was the church. It was that praying spirit of God. Hallelujah. That abides in the believer. Amen. And it was witnessing to the body as well as to the prophet. Hallelujah. To the apostle. What the will of God was and is. Hallelujah. The only way for a church to go wrong is if the church quits praying. The church can got, not get led astray by one man unless the church has quit talking to God. Sadly to say, that happens. The whole congregations get cold and they get away from speaking to God in the spirit and so they begin to lose the hearing and the sensibility of what God wants and what his will is and so as a body they can drift off into places of dry places amen 
But when the body, when the church is like this church, hallelujah, amen, there's praying going up every day. Night and day, there's prayer going up. They're praying in the Holy Ghost. We're not reading prayers off of a booklet, amen, but people are praying talking in tongues, uh, interceding and travailing in the Holy Ghost night and day, praise God. Amen. And I, I like to believe, uh, amen, that we have good preachers come in uh, that have the anointing, praise God. If they don't, I'm not going to invite them to come. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, because we want to know what God will have us to know. What, it was two weeks ago? Maybe a week and a half ago. Well, it's been several weeks. Uh, I spoke to Sister Deborah. In fact, we were looking. God was stirring us up that we needed another small place bigger than what we have. And uh, actually, we were looking for a small apotheke for the young people and for the men to have a recreation place and a clubhouse for their own and uh, so we were looking we had checked out a number of places and uh, talked to a real estate lady she's supposed to be looking in this area for us and uh, but we just didn't seem right about anything one day I was walking down towards uh, the hotel there towards the goodies I guess and I looked to my right and next door they had two big signs on the door and Nikiasite and I said I looked up that's, that's a big building people and it's there's a bank in that building and I said well first of all you said well it's, it's not possible it's going to be way too much money and so I just said I said let me go just look and see what those signs say so I went up there and it said Nikiasite Tetra Kosha Tetragonita and so I look at the next one it says Tetra Kosha Tetragonica Poli Kali Timi I said to myself I never read one like that where they say Para Poli Kali Timi so I said hmm there, there might be an F Korea there might be a possibility here and so I give the job to Sister Deborah because there's nobody that can squeeze the money out of anybody better than Sister Deborah. <laughs> no, I, I said that wrong. There's nobody that can get a better bargain than Sister Deborah. Okay? She's not afraid of these guys. Okay? And so I, cut, I said, I'll give the job to Sister Deborah to go call. So she got the numbers and the first week she lost the numbers and didn't call. I came back from wherever I was, Armenia. I came back and I said, what about those next door? She said, I lost the number and I didn't call. Well, go get them and let's call again. Give it, we want to check on that. And so she got the numbers and she gave the job to Sister Daniela. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I'm just not going to say anyhow, but I tell you what, we have some real nice good financial uh, uh, committee to help take us care of our finances. Amen. You gotta get a witness on that. Hallelujah. You're not gonna get nothing by Daniela and Deborah. Believe me on that one. Hallelujah. So anyhow, I'm, I'm grateful and thankful. They do a wonderful service to the church. And uh, so she gets the message to Sister Daniela. Daniela calls the the, the, the phone number and talks to the people she calls back to Sister Deborah and Deborah finally gets back with me and Sister Deborah says I got good news and I got bad news I don't even remember the bad news now hallelujah but she said the good news is pastor is that the building next door is for 1,000 euros a month just few months ago it was 4,500 hallelujah don't tell me what God can't do hallelujah and so the price came down 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 hallelujah and now they're begging uh, amen for somebody to take the place 
and this solves our problem. We have plenty of room now for all the departments to do what they want to do. Plus, plus, we will have a new auditorium that we will be able to seat over 500 people in. Now, I, I'm, I'm saying all this, okay, because we used to have a church that we could sit almost 500 people in. Amen. We used to have 450 chairs. Amen. And comfortably, we, we sat 500 people. We put out extra chairs. Amen. And so, when we went up there to look at this place, she don't know what she said, but what she said, it was like lightning came into my spirit. And Sister Deborah said, Ooh, this is just like Puliu. Did you get my drift? God is a God of what? Restoration. Hallelujah. And when she said that, the light came on. The inspiration. I believe it was God sending false to false. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To lignatis to poliamu. Hallelujah. It was God is speaking to me as a little sign. And he's saying, I'm going to restore back. I'm going to restore back. Regardless of what had happened, I'm tired of them Egyptians having their foot on my neck. I'm tired, amen, of having them big old debts over my head. Hallelujah. Four or five thousand euros a month to pay rent for some of those outlaws. Hallelujah. Amen. But God took care of it. He said, you go into the wilderness for a while, but I got a plan. Hallelujah. I have a plan. And when she said that, I heard that. It was like a, a bell going off. Hallelujah. God was speaking. He spoke to my heart and said, I am going to give back that which was had, and I'm going to give it back more abundantly. We're not, we're not going to have to climb three stories of stairs to get to it. Amen. But we have an elevator lift. Hallelujah. To Protoorafo. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Sepulikali catastasy. Wonderful condition. Praise God. Almost. We haven't signed papers yet. Amen. <laughs> but we're working on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Because to me it was a sign. When we saw that and she said that, it was a sign. I believe God has ways of letting his people know that they're on the right track. God has a way of letting his people know they're on the road. Hallelujah. They belong on. He has road signs from time to time. Amen. He speaks to us in dreams and visions and in prayer meetings and he has a way of people coming to say something to you and to minister to you and they don't even know what they said but to you it meant a whole lot. Praise God. You know what I'm going to get a witness out there. Come on. We got to preach together today. Hallelujah. I spoke to you about a general never leaves the battlefield with the enemy on the high ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, this army is fixing to take back the high ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Satan, you've had it long enough. We're going to take back the high ground. Hallelujah. This church is a triumphant church. This church is a victorious church. Amen. This church is going forward. Amen. The best days of Crossroads is in front of us. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? I said the best days of Crossroads are in front of us, not behind us. Hallelujah. Y'all just pardon me. I'm going, to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk my heart out here today. Amen. I'm tired of people saying the Crossroads is going down. I'm tired of people telling me that the days of crossroads are over. Amen. That we're just going to shrink down to nothing. Hallelujah. And I'm tired of the devil trying to tell me it's over. It's finished. Amen. 
but I'm going to tell you what, I, I never have learned to listen to the devil. Hallelujah. I have never learned to listen to the voice of the enemy. Amen. I, 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 I have a shepherd, and I am his sheep, and his sheep know his voice. Hallelujah. And I think hallelujah and the voice that i'm hearing the voice that i'm hearing hallelujah is the best is yet to come we haven't even begun to fight if you'll stay with me i'm going to preach today back some months ago we were having brother calvin was here then brother donnie Hugh was different ones was coming. And uh, there was a lot going on, a lot of good things. People getting the whole people getting renewed and praying back through and, and uh, <laughs> there was a lot of laying on of hands going around people laying hands on. Amen. There's nothing wrong with laying on of hands. But uh, <clears throat> I was set on the platform and the Lord was moving. And I got up from here and I started to walk out to go lay hands on people. And the Lord spoke. By the time I got right here, God said, go sit back. And I start backing up. And the Lord said again, watch what I can do all by myself. You understand what I'm saying? So I came and I sat back down. You and God in the talk. You didn't wait for somebody to come and shake your head or scream in Jesus' name. But it was you and God. It was you and God. And I, I say this humbly, and I'm sorry to say, sometimes we get in the way. We can get in the way of the move of God. Hallelujah. And that's what God wanted to show me. Let the people talk to me. Don't jump in between you, them and me. Stay out. Back up. And so I backed up and I began to walk. The prayer was good. But all of a sudden, it, it kicked into a new higher level of praise and worship. Hallelujah. All by itself. And God said, uh-huh. See what I'm telling you? And all of a sudden, people begin to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Nobody praying for you. Just, 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 just like that. Why did it get quiet? It happened. It happened. It happened. And that's what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. You don't need somebody laying their hand on you every day. Hallelujah. You got power. You got the Holy Ghost. You got connections. Amen. If you will reach out, God will touch you. And anything you need is in the house. And God is here. It's here what you need. Praise the Lord. Knock on the door of heaven and he'll open unto you the, the apotheke too. Hallelujah. And whatever you need is in that apotheke. Praise the Lord. But we speak of wisdom of God in a mystery, Paul writes to Corinth. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world under our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would never, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him but God hath revealed them unto us how? by his spirit hallelujah for the spirit searches the deep thing all things yea the deep things of God praise the Lord let me tell you what happened 
the enemy thought but they put Jesus on the Mount Calvary and crucify him on that Calvary amen uh, but what they didn't realize they did not know the Bible says what they were doing uh, what they were doing they were putting Jesus on top of the mountain uh, they were putting Jesus on top of the high ground they put Jesus on the top of the high ground and he's the captain of our soul he's the pilot of our ship he's the leader of this church amen and as long as we keep Jesus Christ and him crucified lifted up high hallelujah he'll draw all men unto him and this church amen we'll have the high ground amen we will win the victory and we will win the battle Storms arise, the winds blow, and the enemy's been trying to get us off of the high ground. But you, you're a loser, devil. You're a loser. You're a loser. Hallelujah. Because Crossroads is still on the high ground, and we're going up higher. We're going up higher. There's some that think, well, we got lots of Filipinos. We don't have lots of Filipinos. We don't have a lot of Filipinos. Why have we got 75, 80, there's 50, 60, 70,000 Filipinos just in Athens. Hallelujah. That's, that what we have is not enough. Don't look at me like this. I mean, y'all are offended by what I said. Hallelujah. Well, you, get, you just need to get offended and get over it. It's time that this Filipino church, hallelujah, step up a little higher and go and double itself. Amen. We need 150. Amen. Before this year's out. Amen. Amen. A Filipina is a Filipina is a Filipina. If they can have a million souls in Philippines, we can have 150 or 200 right here at Crossroads this year. But we got to go for it. Don't get offended because I'm, I'm after the Punjabis too. Hallelujah. I want Punjabis. Amen. Before the end of this year, we're going to fill that building up with all kinds of fish. Hallelujah. We're going to have catfish, swordfish, hallelujah, octopi, everything else are going to be in that church up there. Amen. We're going to have Punjabis, Pakistanis, uh, amen, Igorots, Tagalos, hallelujah, Carlos. We're going to have Syrians and, and the Middle Easterns uh, and Sri Lankans and Indians. Uh, and we're just going to have all of them. Armenian, hallelujah, Mongolia, what's that other one over there? Indonesia, hallelujah. Alienists. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Look out, look out. Look out, here we come. Amen. So the devil is going to be shocked. In fact, he probably is shaking in his boots already. They, 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 oops, we made a big mistake. We crucified Jesus instead of just letting him live. Amen. Praise God. And the crossroads, they believe. Crossroads, they believe. Crossroad, we believe, I believe, you believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. Hallelujah. Okay. Now this is my introduction. You can't see if you don't pray. I said you can't see if you don't pray. I mean, everybody say 49. 49. Saranda and Yah. Hallelujah. You know what that stands for? No, you don't. Hallelujah. But I ain't going to tell you. Praise the Lord. Because this is a Holy Ghost. This is a Holy Ghost number. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a number God put in my heart. Amen. But we're working on it. Amen. Just a few people know what that number is all about. But I, I, if God talks to you and you're sleeping and you see a big 49 in your dream, come talk to me. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're praying and all of a sudden you begin to hear 49, 49, 49, come talk to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. But God is doing things, amen, with an unseen hand. Uh, I might just add this. We want to add as many as we can to our prayer teams. Amen. We want, we've got 
five right now coordinators is it of prayer coordinators uh, and we want you to join that number you can speak to uh, Donna and Deborah there's Virgie and Faye uh, Wapkett and uh, Brother Vincent and uh, oh Sister Dorothy yes amen talk to any of those they will be glad to will help you to become a part of the prayer the basic prayer for we have prayer but there's something else going on in crossroads hallelujah that is very vital Amen. so if you don't pray you can't see you can't hear it's a spiritual thing amen he says he reveals them to us by his spirit for the spirit of god searches all things yea the deep things of god so you can't be a once a week warrior here you're going to have to be more than that to be able to get a hold of what god wants us to see as a group as a team and i'm calling us all out today to pray more amen every day you've got to pray everybody every day make a make a way some way even if you only have five minutes somewhere just steal away for five minutes uh, and pray amen and ask god uh, for a harvesting of souls especially along with anything else you've got to pray about amen praise the lord in joshua it says then spake joshua to the lord in the day when the lord delivered up the amorites before the children of israel and he said and he said in the sight of Israel son stand still stand thou still upon Gibeon which is a geographical place and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon hallelujah Joshua was fighting a battle a war against the uh, did it say uh, Amorites and it was a war going back and forth, back and forth. And then all of a sudden, Israel seemed to be getting the advantage. But the sun was going down. And Joshua said, God stop the sun over Gibeon. And the moon stop over the valley of Ajalon. So that we can see, hallelujah, to do the job. How we can see to get the total victory. Praise God. What am I saying that for brothers and sisters? Uh, if God can stop the sun and the moon in their places, hallelujah, and it's been proved by science uh, that there was a space of time about that long, amen, that it was absent out of some of the calculations of the travelers in space and everything, amen. If God can do it for Joshua, God can do it for Crossroads, uh, amen. Uh, not that we need the sun to be stopped, but we need a miracle. We need miracles. I said we need the miracle. We need the hand of God to do things, mighty things. We need the hand of God to show forth his glory in the midst of his people. Amen. Brothers and sisters, children of God, get ready for the ride. Get ready, hallelujah, to see the wonderful things. Get ready to see the Thavmasta to Kiriyu. Get ready. It's coming to your house. It's coming to your house. It's coming to your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves over their enemies. And there was no day like that before or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. Hallelujah. For God fought for Israel. God fights for crossroads. God fights for the church, the apostolic. One God, Jesus name, tongue talking, holy rolling. Born again, him bound, believing church. Hallelujah. God fights for his people. You are the apple of his eye. You are the most precious thing in all of the earth uh, that God has down here. Is this people in this building today? Uh, you are precious before God. Uh, and he's jealous over you. Uh, he's jealous over you. Uh, don't want not, nobody messing with you. Don't want nobody taking advantage of you. Hallelujah. God is going to fight for you. Moses 
had his hands up. And as long as his hands were up, Israel would, was winning the battle. But when Moses' hands went down, amen, they began to lose the battle. They'd raise them up, they'd win. They'd go down. And as it was getting late in the day again, Moses' arms were so tired. It makes me think of people praying for the Holy Ghost. Holy, and blah, 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 they just get so tired praying. The problem is you pray too long to get the Holy Ghost. You need to just pray and get it quicker. Amen. But, amen, the, the Moses' hands being lifted up. In, 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 in the Bible, in the Scripture, the hand of the man of God represents authority. It represents authority. When he raises his hand, amen, it's, a, it's authoritative action, amen. When he lays hands on somebody, it's, a, it's, it's a, an action of authority coming, hallelujah, amen. And so Moses had his hands up because he was the head. He was the authority, amen. God is not going to circumvent, amen, his leaders, God is not going to go around his leaders as long as they are spiritual leaders. Amen. As long as they are trying to do their best and they're spiritual leaders, uh, God is not going to go around them to somebody else uh, that wants to become a leader. Hallelujah. That's free today. But I'm telling you that, amen, for us to have the move of God, amen, we need to hold up the hands of Moses. We need to respect the authority. We need to respect the leadership. Hallelujah. We need to respect the authority that God has placed in our lives. You say, that's easy for you to say, Brother Pastor. But I wasn't always Brother Pastor. I used to be a Brother Sim sitting on the front bench of my church. Hallelujah. Jumping and dancing and shouting and praising God with all of my heart. But then one guy, God said, okay, Brother Sim. Amen. You've been faithful jumping and shouting. Hallelujah. Come with me. Amen. Come with me. Hallelujah. Amen. And after God did it. He said, go to this altar and kneel down right there. And so I kneeled down right there. And God said, I'm calling you to preach the gospel. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. And then I got up and I went to, and my pastor said, I was ready to go right then. I'm going to go preach the gospel everywhere. My pastor said, you need to go to Bible school. <laughs> you need to learn something, son. And I said, okay, pastor. And I went to Bible school. Amen. The Lord said, hey Amen, you need a helpmate. <laughs> Amen. And I went and I found Sister, little Catholic girl. Amen. But she wasn't Holy Ghost girl. But I brought her to the Holy Ghost church and she got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And after she got the Holy Ghost, she said, I don't even know if I like you anymore or not. <laughs> Amen. I just like Jesus, she said. And so, so time went around and finally, Amen, she came around and we got married. Amen. I'm just telling you folks, it's been a long, long haul. It's been many, many years of growing level by level and step by step and step by step. I know. I've been there. I've walked the walk. I've talked the talk. Hallelujah. I'm here for you. Amen. I'm here because of you. Hallelujah. So be with us. We're here today because of God, but because God has put great leadership in crossroads. Hallelujah. Amen. Work with the leadership at Crossroads. And raise their hands. Raise their hands. Don't pull their hands there. I don't want no doubting. We don't need no second guessing. We don't need no Monday morning quarterbacking. And what if the, we would have did this or we would have done that? No. Amen. We just said, what's next? Hallelujah. What's God going to do next? I better... Okay, let me get on the main part of my message now. Hallelujah. But we need somebody. Somebody has to stand up. Somebody has to have authority and speak with authority. Because without authority, the people are scattered. I'm going to preach here a little bit. I want to help somebody. Today. Amen. Recently, I've been working on a book for the Bible school. And I, I got into Judges, the book of Judges. And I was preparing the book. And what I got to study in the Judges was a very, very interesting book. And actually, it's the biggest, I think it's the biggest chapter in the book, more than any other book in the Bible. But the reason 
Israel had judges was because she was unruly and independent. And God would, they would fall into captivity because they did not have spirituality and leadership in the spiritual things. And if your spirituality goes, then your materialism will go later. Hallelujah. You think you'll get more materialism if you get unspiritual. It seems like that for a little while. But if you stay unspiritual, you're fit, the, the, the material world will go down faster than the spiritual world did. If you can understand what I'm saying there. Hallelujah. But in this book, it ends with a phrase that is so true. It said, in, the, in those days, every man did what was right in their own eyes. That's the church of the end time. That is the charismatic church. They all do what is right in their own eyes. And they don't want a leader. They don't want, they might like a preacher, but they don't want authority. No witness? No witness? They don't want somebody to speak in authority over them. And that's the church of this day and age in which we live. Who are you to tell me what to do? You ain't my judge. No, there are no judges. But you need one because you're living, you're living in your own way. I don't want nobody to tell me what to do. I don't want to go to a church that tells me what to do. Amen. Well then, friend, you are just like one of those in the churches. Uh, you do what's right in your own eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're out um, underneath the protection uh, of the authority that God has placed in the church. Uh, and you need to submit to the authority that God has put in the church. Uh, and hear what thus saith the word of the Lord. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. I'm trying to say it as nice a way as I can, folks. Hallelujah. But it's the truth. And this church is going to go up higher because we have love and appreciation and katinoisi. We have understanding of authority and what it means to our life. Thank God there's somebody that watches for my soul. Thank God there's somebody that's not afraid, amen, to say, brother, you need to pray a little more. Sister, amen, you need to talk a little less. Amen, a little less gossiping in this corner. Amen, and a little more worship over here. You need somebody in your life. Amen. I was just the other day, I was thinking about how do I call these people? And it came to me what I call these people. Amen. They're just independent, drifting, freeloading, do what's right in their own eyes, church. Amen. But that's not God's church. That's not God's church. God has a church, and in his church he has placed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the saints. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he says, submit yourself to those that have the rule over you. Submit for those self to those that have governance, that is a governor over you. Amen. That they may do it with joy and giving a good account for you. I'm helping somebody here today to understand. You can't live like that. You can't continue to live like that. You have to submit to somebody. What about you? I submit to somebody. I got, actually, I got a lot of people I submit to. Praise God. Amen. My wife is one. No. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But it's for our own admonition. And uh, so we need to lift up the hands of the authority in the church. And we're going to move forward. Praise God. Because we can do, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. Paul is letting us know, brothers and sisters, amen, exactly what I'm preaching, we're capable of it. 
We can do it all through Jesus Christ, which gives us the strength. He did not save us to make us weak and sicklings. He saved us to make us powerful and a force in this world. Hallelujah. So rise up, O saint of God. Rise up, my brother. Uh, cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, uh, but understand who you are and what your place is, uh, that you're a child of God, greatly beloved. Amen. Uh, and God's Holy Ghost dwells in you, uh, and you're part of a body. Amen. Uh, 